Ahoy! In today's video, I'd like to show you my current builds and setups that I have in New World that I'm mainly running, especially for PvP. So if you met me in Arena in the past couple of weeks, uh, that would have been what I would have been running. Now, this is just a casual video in between because I'm working on a very big project that a lot of you have been waiting for that should be finished tomorrow, and the full flare guide is also coming soon. Uh, but this is kind of an overview of my own stuff. So we're going to start here with my helm, uh, health and slash conditioning. Health very good, slash conditioning at least decent, and fortifying whirlwind. Uh, I really like fortifying whirlwind, you'll see another piece with that later. This one uh, was the first one that I got, bought from a company mate, uh, which I really enjoy, especially on the new arena map. I really think that whirlwind has value there. This is something I'll discuss more in the future. Uh, but yeah, on the old arena map, it's not quite as great, and since I'm mainly playing arena, I switched off it for now, but when I go back to it on the new map, then I will use it again. The second one here doesn't even have a gem, kind of slotted that a little bit later, just because it was slightly better than the other one, which had refreshing charge on it, which I now have on my weapon. Uh, this is just a heavy piece with health, refreshing sturdy energy, nothing special there. Uh, and yeah, I was running that without a gem, but I knew that I was gonna upgrade it soon enough, so we'll look at my next set soon. Uh, then we have my medium gloves, which I'm still running to this day. I'm only running these for Crippling Reap. It is incredibly hard to get a good piece with Crippling Reap, so Shirking Ford, sure, why not? Empowering Breaker, I don't care about, but I want to have Crippling Reap somewhere, and that's just where it's got to be. I have the Freedom Pants. I have not actually upgraded them, so I was missing a perk on that as well. But I don't really like them that much. I think they have a lot of value in wars or in areas where you just need that kind of CC, that level of CC uh, cleanse. Whereas in arenas, a lot of the CC that you're getting hit by that's really controlling the fight isn't necessarily uh, cleansable by freedom, uh, unless you're someone running 300 con, which I am not. So yeah, I just don't get the value out of this and that's why I switched to. But there wasn't really any other heavy artifact that I was considering at the time anyway, so... This was just what I got early in the expansion and was running with for a while. And as boots, I just got Stone Soul, which I crafted, I think. I think that was from the Materia, which I mainly used to have some 700 years ago there. Then we have the Taiji Kite Shield here. Uh, this one, I talked about very recently, uh, I found in the same place as Immutable Resolve, which I was originally planning to get. Unfortunately, people have told me now that Immutable Resolve is actually bugged because it doesn't have the refreshing defense perk. It has another perk, uh, which I think you can see on this shield as well. Here you can see Priscilla's shield has the same problem. This has shield aggression, uh, and when the shield has shield aggression, it counts as a round shield for flail purposes, so uh, Arcane Smite doesn't actually stagger, which is absolutely horrible. So... Yeah, I'm gonna stick with this shield, uh, which also makes me consider Michael slightly more, technically, uh, but I don't want to replace my armor artifact in favor of Michael. It could be interesting for some situations, I will talk about that in the flare guide. Uh, it's weapon number one here, we have a great X that I found on the training post, pretty cheap actually. Uh, Vicious, one of the main perks I want to have here just for the extra damage. Refreshing move was more kind of a bonus, I don't care about it that much, but I also am not mad it's on there, it's just a more... Uh, refreshing of some kind. The one that I really care about is Refreshing Charge, which reduces the cooldown by 40%, and this is adding with all the other cooldown perks that you can have. So I want to say that the cooldown is uh, 12 seconds on charge if you use the right click, uh, if you have Refreshing Charge on armor, and I think it's 8 seconds with this, something like that. So it's a pretty drastic reduction. Uh, not quite sure why it's that much, but anyways, uh, it's very, very good to have it on your weapon, in my opinion, to just very frequently be able to use charge, which is very good in arena, especially if you're running heavy, because everyone is running away all the time, uh, even more so on the current map. And then we have Whiplash. Whiplash is, yes, the weapon I have been running this entire time. Uh, basically a one perker, because Vicious is not very good on flail. It's not terrible, but it's not very good. Uh, it kind of makes, it kind of gets offset a little bit by the by the attribute split that I use, but yeah. Uh, Burning Smite is what I want to have. That's the perk that I care about, and that's why I'm running it. And it's just fairly expensive to get anything better with Burning Smite, unless you are willing to craft it yourself. Which I might be. I am considering to craft myself, but I'm still not 100% sure if I want to go with uh, the perks that I talked about in the video recently, uh, where I'm going for Burning Smite, uh, Plagued Strikes, and then Trenchant Rend, uh, sorry, yeah, Trenchant Rend, or if I'm going with Refreshing Move as third, so I can get it off my shield and have my flexibility there. Uh, so that's kind of my 
my consideration consideration at the moment uh, why I haven't made my final decision on that. But yeah, kind of back and forth on that. And for now, I'm going to keep running uh, this. I don't want to say piece of crap, but it's kind of a piece of crap. And then we have the Hadron here, Bile Bomb. Uh, I just want to have the enter here. That's the main reason. And I want to have it in AOE, preferably. So it's got to be this one, which also has exhaust along with everything else. It's not as good as it should be, in my opinion, compared to something like Pestilence. The enter here on Hadron, in my opinion, should be at least equally good. It's not... But at least it's something, at least it's anti heal, I guess. And I am trying to get some play crits pieces, but they're not easy to come by. I'm get, trying to get uh, pestilence as well, so yeah. And then we have the champion's amulet here. This I'm going to eventually recraft once it's fixed. Uh, I put a probably either thrust protection or fire protection on there uh, as a third perk along with health and stamina recovery. I also have another one of these. Uh, from the track, so I can recraft multiple with different perks. That would be very, very good. Uh, so that's definitely something I'm going to use. I haven't gotten Ankh yet, so I'm not using that at all. Uh, otherwise, I probably would be with a slightly different setup. But this is what I have for now, and this is good enough. And we have Champion's Ring here. I'm not very happy with this. Uh, I don't really like the combination, uh, because I'm not really making enough use of Keen in the current build. It's nice for other builds, though. Um, Overall, I'd probably be better off with something like Slash Damage, but oh, it's a budget question. I haven't really spent all too much on my build so far because I've kind of been waiting what kind of drops I get first before I invest deeply into it. And then last but not least, we have an Aethos Crystal Earring here that just uh, has refreshing uh, as well as regenerating and then Empowering Toast I don't care about. That's just what was the third perk. Uh, I would want to have a Puri Toast as a third perk, I think. And maybe nimble instead of regenerating, but that's kind of a back and forth uh, in my mind constantly. But yeah, so the choice here is kind of in between those anyways. It's it's still not optimal, but it's a good start to, to work with. Uh, as pots, I'm using infused health pots, uh, along with regeneration serum in arenas, because I made a lot of those, so I don't really mind if I use a few, and in arenas I can't use them up anyway, so even in open world I sometimes use them. And then I have Oak Flesh Bomb on here, and Fire Absorption Potions, and Pop whichever I need, depending on the situation. Uh, I usually don't need other specific mage stuff, so I don't have gemstone, gemstone dust on. Uh, usually it's the fire damage that hits me hard, or it's physical players, so it's between those two. So this is basically the set I was running until today, and today I switched to a fairly different set um, that is still like a work in progress, um, but I wanted to show you anyways. So the first thing here is Helm of the Bear. I put that in, uh, Shirking Heels. Uh, with some refreshing water as well. I don't really care about the refreshing water. I just want to see if Shirking Heels can have enough value uh, running it without uh, Ankh. I have two pieces of it on right now, just the boots and the helm. In my opinion, it might still be good enough just by itself, especially because the health comes along with it and refreshing water is also not bad. Uh, I'll have to try it on a bit. I'll have to see how it goes. Uh, so far, it didn't feel bad, at least I will say that. Now I have a better chest piece. I, I got it this week. Uh, Void Dark Plate. Health, physical aversion, enchanted one, obviously very, very nice, and the extra 20% armor, very good as well. Uh, would be better if we didn't still have the medium gloves. These are still in here because Crippling Reap is so hard to come by on a good piece. Uh, I might just have to craft one, I might just have to roll uh, four health on, on a medium, uh, on a heavy glove or something, uh, so I can run that as full heavy, but then I'm not even sure if I want to stay heavy, so yeah, it's kind of a toss-up. And then we have the heavy legs here. These are with health thrust conditioning elemental aversion, so pretty decent. It was just a drop. I was considering uh, to use these ones instead, but unfortunately the blunderbuss that I bought for fairly cheap has int, and this has int, and I don't want to go over 50 int. 50 int is a, the breakpoint that I'm fine with. More than that is not ideal for my great X. I would have to invest more into the blunderbuss, which is possible, which is manageable, but at the moment I'm happy uh, with this setup and I can switch into these pants if I'm running into a healer and like survivability is not the problem for me, but just I can't get enough anti-heal on them. I need some more damage as well, then I can get some extra int and drop some con uh, maybe or something and, and I'll be fine. But yeah, probably too much effort for one arena anyways. Uh, Great X stays the same here, it's the best I got at the moment. And then the blunderbuss is the one that I bought today. Keen, I don't really care about, but Exhaustive Netshot and Enchanted are what I'm using. So basically a two-perker uh, with a little bit of bonus. So those are my main sets. Uh, the jewelry otherwise here stays exactly the same. Um, but I'm still also like working a lot of stuff because I have a lot of pieces 
in my storage that I kind of need to sort through and uh, that could potentially be better than some of these. It's just that I really want to have uh, the certain weapon perks um, and it's kind of hard to, to get around that, especially with um, Crippling Reap and the Plagued Splitting Grenades. So yeah, bit of a difficult choice at the moment. It's going to be a lot easier once I have Pestilence because then there's less things to think about in that regard. In this set, you can also see the normal stat split. It should be 350 if I have buff food on and strength, 50 in int, and then with the upscaling in Arena or in OPR, uh, you get to 202 con, I think. So, yeah, relatively aggressive split, I would say. The int passives are quite nice uh, because you get uh, the extra backstab and crit damage here, uh, which is basically a mini vicious, and then you also get the 5% damage to anyone inflicted with a damage over time effect, which people have on them quite often, maybe the most builds, uh, especially my flare builds, this is very relevant. Uh, technically, I should be running a rune glass uh, gem so that I can get the dot from that as well. That would help a lot. Uh, I've just been lazy. I've not I've not really spent much, as you can tell. I've not really been min-maxing. Uh, I could easily do that with a, is it energized opal? I think the one, electrified opal. Um, so yeah, absolutely possible. And then to quickly show the builds, uh, these are all very, very work in progress. Uh, so we have the Great X build, that's pretty standard, I would say, there's nothing crazy going on here. Um, maybe this perk is something that is, is debatable with the three people around you, I could maybe put that somewhere else, maybe I could potentially put it into this, uh, I could maybe put it into this. Um, this might actually be more useful because damage doesn't necessarily matter that much, especially this week while we're on, uh, on graph wall. Normally, all of these points here, all of this stuff goes right into Whirlwind and then it feels a lot better anyways. <laughs> I prefer that, uh, but it's just not good on the map that we're on right now, uh, or I think at least. And, and then full charge here, so we can get the right click cancel for the reset. Uh, we have Reap also full for the secondary hit, and we have Bloodlust for the extra movement speed. In extremely important in, in small scale combat, otherwise I feel like it's hardly worth running a Great X in the first place. On the flail, I'm currently running this setup. This needs some modification. This is not ideal. I found some things that I uh, would like to change, at least a couple of points. So don't copy this. There will be a flail guard soon that will update this a little bit. I've just been too lazy to change it so far. And then on blunderbuss, I am still very much testing. Uh, I think the only thing that is unusual in terms of what I'm running on blunderbuss though, uh, is this particular point. Uh, basically I'm dropping the Fortify that a lot of people use, and I'm running the Extended Chamber, uh, which people say is not worth running because you're not really gonna shoot three times or whatever. I find that this is useful in the beginning of arenas. I can shoot twice in the beginning of an arena, and then I can load the Extended Chamber up before the round even starts. Uh, then I have three shots in my mag, and uh, in my opinion, that can absolutely be useful because you're shooting three times instead of twice, and then you switch to your weapon afterwards, and I think that's quite good because you can kind of cancel between all of your shots uh, pretty decently with that so yeah i like it this way that's the only unusual point everything else you've probably seen somewhere else before if you've ever seen a blunderbuss build i am considering to maybe do some switch up uh, do maybe a very cc focused build and drop the, the blast which would take away a lot of damage but at the same time i would just allow for massive lockdown and i still get the plague effect and then purely rely on the great x for damage I haven't done that yet, haven't tried that yet, but could be an option that could possibly be interesting as well. Uh, I'll just try around with it and see how it goes. So those are my builds for now, while doing a mix of PvP and PvE where I'm kind of constantly switching between stuff. For now I'll go back to working on the Rapier Guide with Roger that should hopefully be done by tomorrow. So if you're interested in that, consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you get notified when that comes out. Other than that, thanks to all of my patrons for supporting this video, and thank you for watching. Duke Sloth, out.